Hey there, this is Darren, day 31. Hey, if you've been following along, I am thrilled seeing so many people doing this challenge for their own growth and for helping people. I've heard so many stories of people who've gotten phone calls, who uh, people reached out to them because of their lives. People that, excuse me, they, yeah, their lives, not their lives, but their Facebook lives. So I'm thrilled to see that and see that it's getting traction and you're getting people to know you and your subject and how you can help. So this guy up here, if you don't know him, his name is John Panett, a uh, famous comedian, actor, uh, superhero, uh, one of the guys that I looked up to. And back in the day, back in the 90s, uh, I had this opportunity to open for him. Now, I was just a wannabe. I was still doing open mic nights. And walking out on stage ahead of him, I was so nervous. But John Panette, if you don't know him, check him out on YouTube. Uh, that's what's going on in the background right there. And he was just brilliant. He was so good at what he did. And you might know him for his routine when he talks about being at the Chinese buffet, all you can eat. Uh, and his famous line is, uh, you've been here four hours, you go now. So uh, if you've ever heard that routine, that's John Panette. So back in the 90s, I get this opportunity to open for him. And it was so cool. And I don't remember how it went. I might have done okay because they were, you know, it was John Panette. So they weren't there to see me. I was just a wannabe. It was like a Monday night, a kind of a nothing show for... Um, Hey, Tim Barnaby, kind of a nothing show for Nick's comedy stop, you know, but it's John Panette, so the room is full, but it's a Monday night, and they had this comedy contest, so let me go backwards how that ended up happening. They had this comedy contest that Nick's comedy stop in Boston ran, where they were having a comedy competition, and they were really hyping it up, and, well, let me ask you this, what are some of the say, disciplines that you need to do, that you need to take, that you need to commit to. Like, if you're around your mentor and you had this opportunity to do this or do that, and the mentor would clearly say, dude, you got to do that, even though it might not make any sense, even though it might be challenging, even though it might take a lot of time, what do you need to do? And as you know, if you're watching this and you know my story, stage time, stage time, stage time. So I was there on a Sunday night in an open mic night, and there's this poster up about this comedy contest to open. The winner gets to open for John Panette. But the true story behind it is that the comedy contest was not at any comedy club. Uh, it was actually at a shopping mall. A shopping mall? What? So it was at a shopping mall, which there and of itself is kind of odd a comedy contest at a shopping mall. Now, this wasn't at a comedy club in a shopping mall. Uh, so I decided to enter the contest. I thought, you know, I've been doing this for about a year or so, but it's stage time. It counts, and I get to open for John Panette if I win. Now, I, if you looked at most of the comedians that time, I didn't have a prayer, even against the open micers. But it was like, I don't even remember, like a Sunday afternoon or something, and I couldn't get stage time anywhere else, I'll go do the comedy contest. And part of being successful at anything is showing up. Just showing up. And you never know. I remember in the old days, they would say, you know, if you're an opening act or a middle act and you're at this little satellite comedy club and who knows where, there's going to be a night where the headliner doesn't show up and congratulations, you're now the headliner. So even though you don't have the skills, if the person, something happens. I remember listening to Brian Tracy, and he said uh, uh, some brilliance from Abraham Lincoln. He says, I will study and prepare myself, and someday my chance will come. I love that. I will study and prepare myself, and someday my chance will come. And so I, it made sense, but I never really thought it would happen to me. And it did a couple of times, and it definitely stretched me when all of a sudden I was the middle act and became the headliner because somebody else didn't show up. Uh, but those were in the little comedy rooms. It never happened in the big comedy clubs. Um, well, not to me anyway. 
Anyway, so here I am at a mall. I show up at the shopping mall. It's like an hour and a half from my house. Hey, Regina. Uh, so I go to this shopping mall and I look at the setup. So I get there early. I look at the setup and it's in the middle of the shopping mall. This isn't like a comedy club. It's literally, they set up a stage and they have like 40 chairs sh set up in the middle of the aisle of a, you know, standard old New England shopping mall. And there's a stage and there's a microphone. And I look around and there's only one other comedian that showed up. Me and this other comedian. And even though I've been doing it for about a year, uh, this other guy had been doing it for a few months. So <laughs> this was... This was like trial by fire. So they literally said, well, we've got to have the contest, even though there was no one sitting in the seats. No one. There's people walking by. And this was when like video was in my head. If you ever turn down stage time, I will never help you again. Oh, he could find out. So we had to do the show in order to qualify to open. Uh, but they didn't promote it. It was the wrong atmosphere. It, everything was wrong. Like, if this was to happen now, I probably wouldn't do it. But that night, I felt like I had no choice. So the other comedian goes up, and he does about five minutes. And then I went up, and I did about 15 minutes in a shopping mall with people walking by with uh, grocery bags and people looking at me like, what's he doing? It was painful. It was horrible. And I went longer than the other comedian. So by default, I won. Neither one of us got any laughs. There were nobody there. But it's those things that you and I need to do if we really want to be successful, if we really want to learn a new skill or do something that's new, we've got to stretch ourselves. And those nights can lead to things. Now, John Padette would never ever uh, rest his soul. He didn't know my name. He, I don't know if I even got to shake his hand and at best. But I got the bragging rights to open for him. Why? Because I showed up. Because I did something that was extremely uncomfortable. So, where do you need to show up? What do you need to do that's uncomfortable? Tough questions. Tell your story, inspire by example, and uh, help people. Keep doing what you're doing. Do it bigger, better, faster, stronger, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.